I call this October 7th work session of the Oconee County Board of Education to order. First order of business is we need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Mr. Burgess? Second. Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes 5-0. Next, we have the superintendent's report. Dr. Branch. Thank you, board members. Thank you, staff and visitors that joined us tonight. I uh, want to uh, thank everyone for their hard work last week as we prepared for Hurricane Helene. Uh, we were very blessed, very fortunate. Uh, the rest of the state had some very significant challenges, uh, but our folks did an outstanding job of being prepared for those challenges and doing what was necessary. So uh, we continue to keep everyone in our thoughts and prayers throughout the state, but um, thankful uh, for what we were able to avoid and uh, thankful for the hard work of the staff that was prepared uh, should we need it. And then uh, the little bit that we did get, uh, Tony McCullers uh, and his technology staff went around, uh, as did Ryan White and our operations staff to ensure our schools were ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me, as you know, uh, because of the threat of the storm, we did uh, reschedule uh, our Teacher of the Year banquet, so we're excited to be hosting that tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, to honor our 12 Teachers of the Year and name our District Teacher of the Year. So appreciate the board's support, and I uh, know everyone in this room is excited for that event. Uh, as you probably have seen on social media, we did go ahead and announce uh, much earlier than we've been able to in the past uh, that we will be hosting graduation this year at Aikens Ford Arena. Uh, as you know, the last several years we've been unable to use the Coliseum at University of Georgia. Uh, due to ongoing construction and uh, Steve and Kevin toured that facility for us and came back and gave us great feedback and so we'll be hosting Oconee County High School's graduation at 3 p.m. followed by North Oconee at 6 p.m. on Friday May the 23rd. Uh, you'll recall that that's kind of the schedule that we followed whenever we had graduations at University of Georgia. Um, it is National Principals Month, and so we want to thank all of our 12 outstanding principals. Many of them have joined us today uh, for our outstanding work that they do. Again, we celebrated them on social media, and uh, I'm sure all of their school community has been celebrating them as well. If not, maybe they'll take that hint and, uh, and continue <laughs> to celebrate them. Uh, also in October, we have Custodian and Maintenance Worker Appreciation Day, National School Lunch Week, National School Bus Safety Week, and of course, Red Ribbon Week. Uh, so we want to uh, celebrate all those outstanding individuals. And also, uh, perhaps this is the greatest celebration we could give those individuals, is remind everyone that uh, we'll have a uh, Teacher Professional Development Day on Friday and a Fall Break Day on Monday. So our staff will get a three-day weekend, our students will get a four-day weekend. Now, a couple other things very quickly. Niche rankings came out. You may have seen that on social media as well. And we were ranked the number one county school system in Georgia for the sixth straight year and the 11th time overall. So I'm going to pause and say we need to celebrate that. <laughs> uh, we had five schools in the top 20. Uh, number five was Malcolm Bridge Elementary School. Number 10 was Oconee Middle. Number 13 was Malcolm Bridge Middle. Number 16 was North Oconee High School, and number 18 was Rocky Branch Elementary. Um, and then we were also named the number one county system uh, for districts with the best teachers in the state of Georgia. So outstanding accomplishments there. Uh, if you're interested in the metrics, you can go to niche.com and check that out. Uh, just as we were celebrating that ranking, we also uh, got word of another ranking, School Digger Rankings, or SchoolDigger.com. That's also a national ranking organization. And they named us the number one uh, K-12 school system in Georgia uh, for 2024. They are, uh, we're the number one county system in Georgia on that ranking for the fourth straight year and the tenth time overall. And we had four schools in their top 20. Malcolm Bridge was number 11, North Oconee number 14, Dove Creek Middle School was number 19, and number 20 was Oconee County High School. So outstanding rankings there, and uh, just celebrating the outstanding work that takes place in our schools on a daily basis with our students, teachers, and staff. 
Uh, we do want to make sure that everyone understands that uh, this Wednesday we'll be remembering Do uh, Deputy David Gilstrap. Uh, many of you will remember that Deputy Gilstrap passed away after being struck by a car while directing traffic in the morning in 2008. And so each year annually on that day, uh, we pause to recognize and show our appreciation for Deputy Gilstrap, and you will see that on our uh, school marquees, school signs as well, uh, so that our community can also pause. And we're always appreciative of our uh, deputies and our sheriff's office and all of our uh, heroes that support us on a daily basis, but want to pause on this day and remember Deputy David Gilstrap. Uh, final thing that I have is uh, we'll have more celebrations for milestones, math, and SAT data. I promised Dr. Stansel I would not steal her thunder and tell you all those rankings. And then we were uh, able to celebrate our REACH scholars and uh, uh, Mr. Cockwood's going to announce those names and celebrate those students as well. So that concludes the superintendent's report, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Dr. Branch. Next on our agenda are presentations and discussions. First, we have our teaching and learning report. Welcome, Dr. Stansel. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Dr. Branch, the Oconee. I'm sorry, the October 2024 Teaching and Learning Report contains three items of information and no action items. The first item of information is our District Title III meeting. The District Title III night was held Monday, September 30th at the Oconee County Civic Center. Families of ESOL students were invited to attend to learn more information about this program at their child's school and the supplemental instructional resources offered to them. Thank you to Natalie Stowe for coordinating this wonderful evening for our families. As Dr. Branch mentioned, our second item of information is an update on our Georgia Milestones math scores. As a reminder, board members, we shared our Georgia Milestones results in the areas of ELA, Science, Social Studies, American Lit, Biology, and U.S. History back in August. Due to our new math standards being rolled out and those standards causing an update to our math milestones assessments, those results were just released. And I'm very excited to share them with you tonight. The first slide shows our math proficiency as compared to our RESA in red and our state in yellow in third, fourth, and fifth grade. As you can see, we significantly outperformed our RESA and state in this area. The next slide shows the same information for grades 6, 7th, and 8th. And then this final slide shows our scores for algebra in high school. The next several slides show our rankings in the area of math. So this is our ranking for third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, and we were also ranked number one on our performance on the Algebra EOC. The third item of information is an update on our 2024 SAT scores. This first chart illustrates that Oconee County Schools earned a mean SAT composite score of 1161, which is well above the state score of 1030 and the national mean score of 1028. This is also an increase from last year's score of 1149. This next chart shows the number of OCS test takers for 2024. This also shows an increase in OCS test takers. And our last slide displays the rankings for the top 10 districts in the state. Oconee is ranked third in the state and is also ranked number one among all systems in Northeast Georgia. Congratulations to all our students, parents, teachers, and administrators on these wonderful results. That concludes the teaching and learning report, unless there are any questions. Mr. President? Please. I've noticed over the years that when you, when you give us those rankings and we're always ranked really high, we're always, there's always city schools all around us. I mean, we're, there were a few county schools and you know, we and Forsyth and a couple of others are kind of always there. And then there's always a collection of city schools that are right there with us. Do you have any thoughts about 
what, why, the, why are those city schools, what's going on to make those city schools, co you, know, com you know, compete that well with a county system like ours or vice versa? I, mean, I, I find it curious, but I've noticed that over the years it's kind of a, a consistent presence. Right. Sometimes it can be based on the number of test takers um, at those different districts. And so um, you can look at that, too, to see our percentage can be just a little bit different. Also, when you look at the actual percentages that determine our ranking, it's usually within tenths of points that yeah. cause us to be number one, two, or three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Thank you, Dr. Stansel. Next on our agenda is student services. Welcome, Dr. Yancey. Good evening, Dr. Branch and board members. The October 2024 Student Services Report contains four items of information and one action item. The first item of information is a continued review of our school safety procedures and support measures. In previous meetings, we have taken time to review how we work with local law enforcement and first responders to ensure our practices are appropriate for our 12 campuses. In addition to the concrete preventative measures we have established, I'd like to take time to review the emphasis on student wellness offered through the engagement of health and uh, support services. We have four outstanding groups of support staff at the school and district levels that are pillars in building relationships and providing care for our students and staff. The first group is guidance counselors, and they are located in all 12 of our schools we have one guidance counselor at each elementary school, two at each middle school, and four at each high school. Our guidance counselors wear many hats in support of our students and develop strong relationships with them. In many situations, our guidance counselors are the first line of communication and contact for our students. Guidance counselors welcome new students, guide and plan with current students and work in conjunction with school faculty and staff to ensure a safe learning environment. The role of a school guidance counselor varies from K-5 to the secondary setting, but the premise of counseling, orienting, and communicating with students, parents, and community partners remains consistent. Our guidance counselors remain available to students to provide counseling that directs our students toward personal growth, self-understanding, and maturation. Next, we have our school nurses. Our health services team consists of a full-time licensed nurse on each of our 12 campuses. School nurses work to develop first-hand relationships through medical and emotional knowledge of our students to promote a positive learning environment. Our team promotes healthy lifestyles by providing health care counseling and guidance to students and their families and staff. In addition, our school nurses identify health concerns provide appropriate care, administer student medication, and conduct screenings for vision, hearing, and scoliosis. Third, we have our school social workers. We are fortunate to have two veteran school social workers who support our system. Our school social workers work in a variety of capacities and settings to engage students and families to promote healthy opportunities and relationships. School social workers support the needs of students and their families by facilitating collaboration between home, school, and our community. Examples of connection include our relationships with community partners such as OARC, SANE, OCAF, ESP, ACTS, Chamber of Commerce, Sheriff's Office, Lions Club, and Rotary Club. In addition to connecting our families with support and resources, our school social workers conduct home and site visits when necessary to better communicate with parents and also at times to support residency and school attendance policies. Finally, we have our school psychologists. Our three school psychologists assess the psychological and educational needs of referred students to support their overall learning experience and to determine if they meet state eligibility guidelines for special education services. School psychologists prepare and conduct assessment reports, prepare eligibility reports, and consult school staff for students being considered for tier three services. The relationships our school psychologists develop with students and staff ensure effective instructional experiences and student safety in learning environments. The second item of information 
is the public school choice timeline for the 25-26 school year. Applications for public school choice will be available on Friday, November 22nd, 2024 at 4 p.m. The window for public school choice will close January the 17th at 4 p.m. And decisions letter, letters will be mailed the following week on Friday, January the 24th, 2025. Applications will be available on the main district website and via links on the district's social media accounts. This year, all 12 schools are available for public school choice. To make this process easier for our families and to support the planning purposes of school personnel, public school choice will now become a decision for K-5 and 612. So families would make a decision for their elementary school and then only one decision for a secondary path once in sixth grade. Whereas in the past, families would have to make a choice for K-5, then 6-8, and then again for 9-12. The third item of information is our flu clinic uh, vaccine clinics for our faculty, staff, and their families. Annually, we partner with our local health department to ensure that every employee and their immediate family members have the option to receive the flu vaccine. Our clinics begin last Monday and will conclude tomorrow. In all, we have hosted 14 clinic sites, which includes 12 schools, transportation, maintenance, and a district site for technology and district staff here at the ISC. The fourth item of information is an update on the district's memorandum of agreement with the Oconee County Sheriff's Office regarding the School Resource Officer Program. The district has spent time reviewing memorandum of understandings and agreements from other districts in our RESA to gain perspective of what an agreement should entail. We have shared these documents with the Sheriff's Office, Sheriff's Office to review common language and components of understandings and agreements. Each memorandum reviewed includes sections including purpose, term of agreement, program staffing, duties and responsibility of program officers, compensation, termination, and assignability. In addition to reviewing documents with the Sheriff's Office, we'd have mo we've held multiple meetings with Sheriff Hale and his team, and at the school level, we have spent time with our principals and current SROs to further informally define the roles and responsibilities of an SRO in the school setting. And student Services has one action item for the October 7th Board of Education work session. This action item is an out-of-state field trip for North Oconee's varsity baseball team to travel to Orange Park, Florida. The superintendent's recommendation is to approve the field trip as presented. And this concludes Student Services report unless you have any questions. I have one. Uh, we currently have SROs at our two high schools. Can you give us an update on that? Yes, ma'am. It's been a, a very fluid transition. Like I mentioned, we've, hold, we've held multiple meetings uh, with Sergeant Dorsey and Deputy Blair, our principals, uh, just to discuss what that looks like at the initiation and then after a couple weeks uh, from the initiation date. Uh, it's very smooth. Our deputies typically start the mornings at the high schools uh, and they move to our other campuses throughout the day. Uh, they're at our high schools to uh, during transitions working to to build relationships with students and continue to, to push the positive culture in the buildings. So, so far, so good. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Mr. Burgess. Uh, let me start, Dr. Yancey. First, thanks for the, uh, the, the reminder about the, the school resource support that we already provide. We kind of forget about that sometimes, and clearly we've been focused on the SRO piece, but I think it's important, and what you reminded us of tonight is is the support for the students and the staff that are there already with the counselors and the psychologists and the social workers and others. So I appreciate you reminding us of that with the investment we've made there in that component because to me it sort of speaks to the issue of prevention and maybe trying to get in front of some of these issues before they happen and, and you know what you kind of clearly remind us of is there is some investment there and it's a part of the whole, whole conversation and plan to, to not forget about. Um, on the SROs, can I ask you a couple, something about sort of what the conversations have been like so far with the, with the Sheriff's Office. Um, if I understand it correctly, what we're talking about is in, they, these, these officers would be employees of the Sheriff's Office, full-time employees of the Sheriff's Office. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And they would be just like any other uh, certified officer of the, of, the, of the Sheriff's Office. They would be a certified 
post-certified police officer uh, that's qualified to, to be a, a deputy sheriff uh, for the for the police, police uh, for the sheriff's office, correct? Yes, sir. Um, we're in school about 180 days a year, which sort of uh, is about half the calendar year. So, this is a question, not a statement. I want you to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. What we're talking about, what we're talking about so far, are employees that will be full-time employees of the sheriff's office that would be assigned to us for duties and responsibilities that are being debated and discussed uh, as SROs in our school system for about half the year. The other half of the year, then they would be employees of the sheriff's office and, be, we, and would do whatever duties the sheriff's office decides he needs those officers to be engaged in? Yes, sir, that's what's been discussed to this point. Okay. Um, so we're, we're talking about officers who are basically 50% assigned to responsibilities in our school system and 50% assigned to responsibilities for the entire county and the sheriff's office in total? Yes, sir. Okay. In your review of the MR, M, MOUs that have been out there so far, is that kind of a standard model with, with responsibilities and cost sharing and everything? Is it kind of a, a shared responsibility between the school system and the sheriff's office? Yes, sir. Wanted to make sure I hadn't. Over, I wasn't. It looked pretty simple to me and pretty straightforward, and so appreciate you sort of making sure I had the correct understanding there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? I have a slight question to tack on the Tim's. Um, <clears throat> so if we, if there's an SRO that's assigned to a school, I'm assuming they stay there for that year, and then we review at the end of the year if we have that same assignment again. But once they're kind of hours, they're hours, right? Yes, sir. And they don't. They don't respond to traffic accidents or anything of that nature? No, sir. They, they would be primarily for the school if they are needed. Obviously, they would be needed to go somewhere, but typically that's handled by deputies on patrol. Um, just a, I think one point of, to, to clarify, and I'm going to laugh when I say this. Tim was saying 180 days, and that's half the year. Um, I know I don't work 360 days out of the year, so um, we, we will, they, they will be off on the weekends and other times as well, so um, a little bit of variance there, but um, adding on to, to Michael's comments, I, I know in our, our discussions and meetings with Sheriff Hell in the past, um, we have our strategic systems in place to where his staff is able to um, instantaneously see what's going on in our schools. They're able to know when we go into a hard lockdown, they're able to see where in the school there is an issue and then I know he has touched on in the past how he has instructed his um, deputies to if they need to do paperwork go to one of the schools to do paperwork park in the parking lot and I know when we drive past our schools we will see them around anyway um, I guess one of my concerns as we go through this is to ensure that there's not a change to that because I do love seeing them when they're they're parked out um, and are already visible at our schools. So uh, my hope is as we go through the MOUs and I see all of the ones from the various counties downloaded out here um, in, in assembly. So just to make sure that we're not making a change um, or any negative change out there that could slow down response time for those deputies who are not our SROs. Um, that's just a concern of mine. Yes, sir. Not saying it's a founded concern, not saying that there's a change that's going to be there, but just wanted to make sure I expressed that. Yes, sir. Thank you. I wanted to go back to the student services and support personnel. I, th I think in the past, I recall that like the school nurses, that we have more than what we qualify, qualify for from the state. Is that the case? And is that the case in other categories there too, that the, we pick up more than what we would typically be allotted? Yeah, I'll take that one. Yes, ma'am, we uh, have local costs for our nurses. Uh, the state allocates a couple of nurses, uh, and we have one at each school. Uh, as you guys know, you approved that in the budget a few years ago. Uh, also, counselors, you've approved additional counselors as well. So, uh, and I believe we've approved additional psychologists in the, in the recent past uh, also. Uh, we'll double check on those other Categories, but certainly those other two, I know we're over capacity. Okay, thank you. And I know that you bring that to our attention every year because we uh, need to boost up those areas. And then I did want to say, and I think a lot of y'all know this, I, 
I was at the Oconee County uh, Republican meeting when James Hale spoke last and he commented on this and actually obviously he's very passionate about it too and um, just like us wants to move things forward but he did stress the hiring situation and so I think there's we need to just be intent on that we get the right structure set up but then be aware that we were fortunate that he had two deputies that we could put in the high school right now but he has indicated that hiring he expects to be difficult like it already is for him that that conversations continued in our conversations as well in terms of the challenges of staffing uh, that I think he's seeing and and sheriff's offices and, and law enforcement and you know we see them in certain areas as well uh, those challenges still exist so uh, yes ma'am I would want to make com one comment about uh, mr. hammock's comment we all know <laughs> bankers don't work every day but uh, <laughs> I set myself up for that <laughs> But, I, but in deference to our friends in the law enforcement, I know they're working every day. They do work every day. <laughs> Just one final comment, board members and for our audience. The MOUs, as a reminder, have been attached to assembly. The six, I think we have about six examples uh, there. So those are there for your review. We encourage you to review those or continue to review those. And if there's thoughts, uh, items that you want to share with us as we continue to work the process. We'll make sure that we work on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is special education. Welcome, Ms. Corngo. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. The Oconee County Special Education October 7th board report contains one item of information and no action items. First, um, information item is Oconee County Victory Day. The Oconee County High School football team hosted a Victory Day on um, this past month in honor of our special education students and fans of the Oconee Cluster, which included elementary, middle, and high school students. The event began in the locker room with a short meet and greet with the Oconee County football team and their coaches. The students then ran out onto the field for um, a short game. The cheerleaders and the band and the football play players all joined them. The students participated in this short game where the students with special needs were catching passes, running with the ball, scoring touchdowns. The event also included some practice drills with the football team members. The Oconee County High School Band and the Oconee County Cheerleaders were all on hand to support this event. This is a huge thank you to Coach Hall and his coaching staff, Coach Yancey for her cheerleading staff, and then Mr. Provost for the high school band. It was a wonderful event. Parents came out, and it was great to see the whole cluster from elementary, middle, and high. Even our preschool students came out. Any questions? Thank you. That concludes special education report. Next on the agenda is operations. Welcome, Dr. White. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. Operations has four items of information and one action item for this evening. The first informational item for operations is an update on our energy report. Our kilowatt usage per day for 1,000 square feet has been updated for the prior month. The second informational item is our transportation update. For the previous month, we had 20 field trips, 109 athletic trips, 20 special education trips, 179 buses deployed for a total of 9,769 miles. Our third item of information is an update on school nutrition participation for the month of September. Board, member, board members, you'll see that we saw an increase in participation for breakfast of 1.12% and lunch of 2.92% as compared to September of 2023. Transportation has also issued a request for quotes for six new school buses. Operations will be bringing this as an action item at the November 7th, 2024 regular session. 
operations action item for the next regular session is our vehicle surplus list. You'll see we have three white fleet vehicles that need to be surplus based on our replacement cycle and cost of repairs. Of the three, two are so old that the odometer is not operational. <laughs> <laughs> and that concludes the operations report unless there are any questions. Any questions? Mr. Burgess. Yes, sir. Ryan, just a, just a point of clarification. The, the six new school buses that we're seeking to buy, that will keep us on the rotation schedule that we've established and been, been maintaining for a number of years now? Yes, sir. Six buses a year. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have operations. Welcome, Mr. Rickardson. Good evening. The Oconee County Schools Operations Facilities October 7, 2014. 2024 Board of Education report contains two items of information and one action item for the October 21st Board of Education meeting. The first item of information is the lead custodian meeting. The September lead custodian meeting was held on Thursday, September 12th and was hosted by the team at Duff Creek Elementary School. The team discussed equipment repair procedures and proper care and maintenance for soap dispensers. Our custodial teams are to be commended for the rigorous work ensuring that our schools are clean for health. Second item of information is a construction update. The new instructional sports center, as you know, uh, we've continued to work through uh, uh, close out issues, uh, punch list items. We're getting very, very close to closing everything out uh, and uh, working very diligently to take care of those items. The generator project, as you know, the generators are on order. We're expecting them in early spring of next year. Uh, we are, the contractor has been working uh, school by school, doing preliminary work, getting ready so that when the generators are here, it's as simple as putting them in and get them started up. So uh, we, we have continued to make good progress there. The, we have one action item this, this month, and that is the uh, certificate of the board. If you remember, we did this last month for the uh, primary, elementary, and high school modifications project. This is for Duff Creek Middle School. Uh, the certificate of the board certifies that all vendors have been paid in full, and this is a final certificate that we need to provide to the DOE to get um, reimbursement from, from the DOE for our project. And that concludes the uh, operations report, unless there are any questions. Any questions? Yeah. Um, given the disaster issues that have been that we've dealt with the last couple of couple of weeks around the southeast, especially, but other parts of the country, do you expect any delay or disruption in our receipt of those generators, or are we still kind of in the queue and going to get them when we anticipated we would get them? It's my understanding that that uh, they don't never put anybody to the front of the line, and so when we're in the queue, we're uh, our places. Is, is solid. Now, I haven't heard about any damage to a, a factory that manufactures their generators. I haven't heard any, any feedback for, for that. But as far as I know, we're still on track. Okay, great. Thanks. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is human resources. Welcome, Mr. Kofer. Thank you. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. The human resources report this evening contains one item of information and no action items. Our item of information tonight is to highlight our alumni. As you know, each August, the HR office provides an update to you on the hiring season. We include the years of experience, degrees held, and where our new hires are coming from. But the metric we love to share the most is the number of alumni that we have hired. This year, we were asked how many alumni work in the district, and frankly, we didn't know a total number. So we created a Google form and shared it out with our faculty and staff, asking that they submit their name, position, and the years in which they attended Oconee County Schools. Once we had this information, we decided it was not only for us to know, but for all to know who the alumni are, and thus we created the alumni badge that you see here. On the left is the standard badge of Oconee County Schools, and to the right is the more prominent, and as Dr. Stansel describes it, very attractive badge for alumni. <laughs> Over the last two weeks, we have visited with the alumni at all 12 schools, the Department of Transportation, and those here at the ISC to distribute the 153 alumni badges, representing nearly 13% of our faculty and staff. We learned that we have alumni in nearly every job family in the district, from 84 teachers, 
18 paraprofessionals and seven administrators, to nurses, bookkeepers, and custodians, including Mr. Robert Harris, who was handed the keys to Colin Ferry the day he graduated over 40 years ago. School food nutrition assistants and managers, school clerks, TSTs, database specialists, media specialists, speech language pathologists, bus drivers, and route supervisors. We learned that even within a school building, the staff are not aware of who all are alumni, and this spurred so many conversations. From what year did you graduate? Did you know so-and-so? And oh my gosh, my son went to school with you. <laughs> as we visited each school, the enthusiasm was contagious, but none so much as Graham Brooks, a proud class of 2016 warrior who even dressed up for the occasion. <laughs> It is our hope that these badges allow alumni to continue to connect with one another as they move throughout the district on days like this coming Friday when they will be together for a district professional learning day. These connections build upon the small town field this school system prides itself on while the alumni you see provide the world class education we all expect. It is truly special to have those who receive their education in Oconee County make the choice to come home and pour into the next generation and we are proud to highlight these alumni who are such an important part of our OC family. We actually have a few of them in attendance here tonight, and I'd like to ask that if you are an alumni of Oconee County Schools, that you please stand. <laughs> and Dr. Stansel is still bitter that she doesn't have an alumni badge. <laughs> this concludes the Human Resources Report for this evening, unless there are any questions. No, but I see a couple of those alumni are former students of mine. I'm glad y'all are here. <laughs> Thank you. Next on our agenda is communications. Welcome, Mr. Colquitt. Thank you. Good evening, board members and Dr. Branch. Our first item of information for communications this evening is the social media impressions for 2024 September. Uh, as you'll know, notice, uh, we had, uh, frankly, astronomical numbers during the month of September. It was a, it was a very newsworthy month, and um, uh, we were, frankly, blown away by the numbers that we saw uh, by way of impressions, almost uh, 14,500 impressions uh, per social media post. Um, that was led by, I've, I've shared with you before, we, we aim for a 10,000 uh, post impression uh, that's that's kind of the high water mark. You see, we averaged above that for the month. <clears throat> for when we reached out as an Oconee County Schools community to our friends in Barrow County and Appalachia, 51,000 impressions. We've never seen a number like that. Um, so that's why our numbers are, are so high. Uh, we're also excited to share, though, that uh, not only uh, did we have uh, those numbers for Appalachia and for Barrow County, but uh, uh, homecoming for both Oconee and North Oconee were two of our higher numbers as well. So the community really came together during the month of September, and that's uh, something that we're really proud of. Second item of information I have for you this evening is the REACH Scholarship. Uh, we spent some time with these impressive, uh, impressive young people earlier this, uh, this month, and uh, um, we'd like to single them out now from Oconee Middle, Isabella Robledo Ortiz and Avery Jorgensen from Malcolm Bridge Middle, Angelique Serrano, and from Dove Creek Middle, Dylan Smith. They are recipients of the REACH Scholarship. Uh, of course, we all know high school uh, juniors and seniors and student athletes who have already gotten scholarship offers. These fine folks are eighth graders. Uh, they've already made the first step toward uh, going to college uh, and, uh, and then whatever happens for them career-wise after that. So awfully proud of them for for the focus and the vision they already have as eighth graders. Special thanks to Natalie Stowe, our director of CTAE and federal programs, for her efforts in establishing uh, these REACH scholarships for these four. Uh, Ms. Stowe told us in advance how impressive these young people were. Uh, we spent about an hour with them, and uh, she was not wrong. Uh, they were very impressive young people, and, and uh, you, you can't help but feel good for the future when you spend time with, with young folks like that. Uh, an additional thanks to our local sponsors of the REACH Scholarship, Georgia Home Partners Realty, Oconee State Bank, Bank South, Peach State Federal Credit Union, and Athens Ford. 
Our third item of information is the September highlights video. That concludes communications, unless you have any questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a need to go into executive session and need a motion to do so. I'll make a motion that the board will adjourn to executive session to discuss or deliberate upon personnel matters as described on the affidavit to be attached to the minutes. Thank you, Ms. Parrish. We need a second. Second. Mr. Hammock, all in favor? Passes 5-0.